impacts of all of the committees, and I've been appointed to Ways and Means. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Uh, John Jan Janigan, did I say that correct? It's um, actually Janigian. I-A-N is uh, like Ian, so Janigian. And um, I'm uh, starting my third term. In my first two terms, I was on public works and highways. And um, I'm very pleased to join Ways and Means and hope that I can uh, help out. And, uh, and um, my background wise, I have a bachelor's degree in chemistry and a master's degree in computer science. Um, spent about 25 years in the computer software industry, uh, holding various positions from computer programmer to director of engineering. Uh, more recently, I've been uh, out of out of tech and and um, I'm a real estate broker, and uh, my wife and I property manage our own properties. So uh, have a very varied bit of experience and hope to um, be effective on ways and means. Well, thank you, John. Uh, before we go on, uh, you mentioned your experience with computer engineering, and what I'd like to know is anybody that's on the committee that could help us out in uh, operating these so-called Zoom meetings or hybrid meetings, uh, if you would step forward and let myself or Jen know, it would be a help. But sometimes things get pretty uh, uh, challenging and we need all the help we can to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So next sure. would be Herschel. Nunes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, uh, colleagues. I'm Herschel Nunez, and I live in Pelham, New Hampshire. I've been in New Hampshire for about 20 years. I moved here from Texas, from Houston, Texas. Um, I worked in, um, in HR systems, implementing HR systems for about 25 years. Uh, I'm now retired. This is my second term. I also serve on the Labor Committee. I'm one of those two committee people this, this time. So nice to meet everyone. Thank you, Hustle. Tim Baxter. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and hello, uh, colleagues. I'm really looking forward to serving with all of you. I'm a freshman representative from Seabrook and Hampton Falls, which is District Rockingham 20. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I own and manage a six unit um, residential business, so I'm in real estate, um, as same as John. And then I also um, run a nonprofit that I created, Second Chances, which helps fund people struggling with addiction to get them into treatment programs. So um, again, I'm really looking forward to serving with all of you. Thank you, Walter uh, Spillsbury. Good morning, everybody. I'm uh, living in Charlestown over at the Connecticut River Valley. I grew up initially on Long Island, went to college in Maine discovered the beauty of Northern New England at Bowdoin. Um, I earned a law degree in Seattle at University of Washington and later in the middle of my career an MBA at uh, Columbia in New York. Um, I've been hither, thither, and yon, uh, living and working in Seattle, Washington, D.C., uh, New Jersey, the Netherlands, Connecticut, and came here uh, 13 years ago. I'm retired and work actively in the community. Uh, 13 years with the Scout Troop, eight as Scoutmaster, just left as chairman, planning board chairman, finance committee, uh, previously Heritage Commission. So it's time for me to come to the State House, and I appreciate being here with you on Ways and Means. Another Scouter. I just see you. Paul Tudor. Good morning. I'm a freshman state rep from Northwood. Uh, I also serve on the Northwood Budget Committee. I've uh, been in Northwood for approximately 20 years. My mother was born here. I grew up in Massachusetts and was educated in Massachusetts. I have a uh, BS in mechanical engineering. I spent uh, 35 years working for a general electric company in Lynn, Mass, uh, operating and designing their jet engine test facilities in Lynn. I look forward to uh, working with the committee on, on matters going forward. Currently retired.
Thank you. Uh, Susan Elmy. Hi, uh, I'm Susan Elmy. I'm from Lebanon, New Hampshire. Uh, I have been working for, I realized that I'm halfway through a 50 year career. I mean, <laughs> I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I've finished a 50 year career now in two pieces that were equal to each other, 25 years in uh, on Africa and Latin America on basically working as a socioeconomist. Uh, that's something that um, I evolved for myself. It is a practicing uh, Renaissance social scientist, but I also have worked with agronomy. I've worked, um, spent a lot of time in very muddy fields and in countries with all kinds of political systems and all kinds of economic chaos or, or hope going on. Uh, and uh, I then ran into medical problems that made it difficult uh, to continue, impossible to continue in uh, third world cities uh, and came home uh, to be near my parents and uh, fell into the legislature uh, within a year. So um, I have been 25 years now in the New Hampshire legislature. Uh, I came in at the same time as your chair, our chair, and um, we joined the finance committee together uh, 12 terms ago and moved on, were put on the division that had to deal suddenly with the Claremont education funding problem, uh, and which qualified us as tax experts by the time that was over. And uh, we moved together to Ways and Means on 11 terms ago. And so I'm starting my 13th term on I have always believed that on the best we can do for an economy is for to enable as many people as possible to be creative about solutions to goals that are developed by the the total community and on um, we've been doing that in our committee for quite a while on um, we are in a very strange economic time. It's going to be really difficult. And I am so glad that Representative Major is chair this term instead of me. I took us through the Great Recession. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. As you can tell, Susan and I have been together for a long time. OK, next would be uh, Dick Ames. You know, Dick, Richard Ames was uh, Vice Chair when Susan was Chair. Thank you. Um, so let's see. I've been on the Ways and Means Committee for eight years. This is my ninth year. And uh, that's been a great experience. Two terrific leaders, Representative Major and Representative Army, through those years. Um, and uh, before that, going way back, I uh, received my, I, I earned my law degree in the late 60s, um, then proceeded into practice uh, after a stint in the Peace Corps. Um, and I, you could sort of roughly divide my career before I retired in 2001 uh, into two parts. One First part was in the public sector, the second part in the private sector. In the public sector, I served as general counsel for a number of state agencies. And in the private sector, I had my own law office and uh, primarily worked in the field of disabilities, particularly men mental disabilities. And, and uh, so that was, that was a good period of time. Came to New Hampshire in 2001 and uh, have enjoyed myself ever since. Um, so um, I guess that's enough. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Tom Southwood. Good morning. Hi, I'm Tom Southworth from Dover, New Hampshire. Um, this is my fourth term in 
the House and my fourth term on Ways and Means, which I have really enjoyed. <clears throat> my background is in public education. I was a reading teacher, school counselor, and finally administrator. Um, I did quite a bit with budgets and data analysis um, and writing federal grants. In Dover, I'm also a selectman and on a nonprofit board. I've lived mainly in the Norwich, Vermont, Hanover area when I was younger and now the Seacoast area. So I've kind of, you know, I've had, had the best of both worlds, so to speak. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Dennis Malloy, he was the uh, past clerk of the committee. Yeah, thank you, uh, Representative Major. And I, I, I really enjoyed that work. And uh, I'm, Representative Bernstein, if there's anything you need or can help you with or work through that, I'd be happy to uh, help you um, if you so choose. Uh, I, uh, my wife and I moved here from Iowa in 2001, uh, born and raised in Iowa, a bachelor's degree from Coe College in Cedar Rapids, master's degree from Iowa State University in journalism, mass communication. I uh, was the chief development officer at Iowa Public Television uh, for 15 years, moved here to be the chief development officer at New Hampshire Public Television for 10 years. That's a job where we raise the private money, the non-public uh, non money for uh, these operations, multi-million dollar operations. And I was responsible for all the private funding there. Uh, here in, uh, New Hampshire, I'm on now, I'm on the Board of Trustees of the Granite State Y, and I'm the chair of the advisory board of the Seacoast YMCA, and also a, a graduate of leadership in New Hampshire. This is my uh, fourth term uh, and my uh, third term on Ways and Means. My first term was on municipal and county government when I was elected first to the house from Barrington um, for a term. Uh, and then uh, uh, for one term, and then we moved to Greenland. My wife and I moved to Greenland to be closer to her business in Portsmouth. Uh, and uh, I ran in Greenland here uh, in 2016. Um, and that's what I've been doing uh, since then, um, that's the uh, that's that's my story, and uh, enjoyed both municipal and county government and ways and means. This has been uh, I, my role was to project revenues and raise revenues for both of these um, uh, public television networks. So it's a very comfortable place for me to be. And thank you for your leadership, Representative Majors and Representative Almy. It's been terrific. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, Thomas Chamberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And that tie is quite bright. Okay. Uh, my <laughs> name is uh, Tom Chamberg. I represent the towns of Wilmot and Sutton near New London. I'm a retired uh, teacher. Uh, after retirement, I went and got my uh, JD in Massachusetts. I uh, also serve uh, on the select board of Wilmot and on the municipal budget committee for the Kearsarge Regional School District. Uh, thank you very much. And if anybody, uh, this is my third term on Ways and Means. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Next would be Edith Tucker. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I am um, live in Randolph, New Hampshire in the North Country, right on uh, Route 2 that goes between Gorham and Lancaster. Uh, I've been a reporter. I still do some reporting. I report on what happens in Gorham, which I don't represent. I represent uh, Whitefield, Carroll, which is Twin Mountain and Bretton Woods, uh, Jefferson and Randolph. So I have two grand hotels in my district, uh, which is sort of one end of the economic spectrum and a lot of despair too up here. Uh, I've served on school boards in Massachusetts, been a member of Leadership New Hampshire class, and enjoy my time in Randolph, where my husband and I uh, moved a little over 25 years ago, where my extended family spends time in the summer. 
Ways and Means has been a terrific experience. This is my third term I'm going into. And what's been really gratifying on Ways and Means is that there's a tremendous effort to be able to reach consensus on factual matters. And I think it gives our committee a tremendous strength in the House itself, naturally on things that are partisan, people are partisan, but on seeking the facts, there is an agreement that we'll work together. And I, I think it's really a fabulous committee to be on for that reason. I don't bring as many financial uh, qualifications as many on the committee, but this outstanding contribution the committee makes to the legislature is very important to me. Thank you. Thank you, Edith. Next is Janine Grimaldo. You have to unmute yourself. Sorry about that. Thank you, Norm. Um, this is my second term and I served on Ways and Means my first term. Um, I'm a small business owner with my husband here in Swansea, lived here the majority of my life. Um, I've previously served uh, here in town on the school district budget committee, uh, the local library as treasurer and trustee for 10 years. And I was the town treasurer um, in, for a year and a half until I got this job and it, the time constraints didn't work. Um, I enjoyed this committee a lot. It, there was a big learning curve, but I'm looking forward to this term with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. This is uh, Tom Longman. And it's Jenny, by the way, Norm, not Janine. Thank you. Uh, Norm, for Jennifer. Yeah, all of you, you are gonna have to keep correcting me because I really screw names up and, and I apologize ahead of time. Okay. okay. Uh, Tom. Tom Longman. Tom, which Tom? I'm here. I'm here now. Sorry, it was a double muted. Um, it's good to be with you all this morning. Um, Representative Tom Lockman from Hampton. This is my second term in the House, second term on Ways and Means. Very pleased to see my returning colleagues and looking forward to working with you all again and uh, looking forward to meeting, getting to know uh, some of the new members of the committee. And just to echo something that Representative Tucker said, I found my time on this committee to be among the least partisan experiences uh, in politics. And I, I enjoy that, enjoy the collaboration and the thoughtfulness that goes into the work we do. Um, I am an environmental health and safety executive for uh, a top government contractor. We do a lot of work for the Department of Defense, um, intelligence agencies, and uh, Department of Energy. And I also do a little bit of teaching part-time um, for Harvard University School of Public Health on the subjects of performance measurement uh, and analytics. So I think my interest in data and analysis uh, served me well here. And um, again, just looking forward to working with you all. I think this is a consequential time for the state of New Hampshire and uh, glad we have a lot of good heads in the room to solve problems. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next is um Amanda, Amanda, G O, Amanda, if you would tell me how to pronounce your last name. Yeah, I will. No worries. It happens all the time. So, um, hi all. My name is Amanda Gorg. Uh, it rhymes, as my mom says, with morgue. Um, or if you're a Star Wars fan, it rhymes with porg. So, uh, just drop the extra vowels, and you'll you'll probably figure it out. Um, I live in Lee, so I represent Lee and Barrington. Uh, this is my third term. Last year, I was the chair of environment and agriculture. Um, I own my own marketing meetings and events company. I'm also a real estate agent, which seems to be a common theme in this group, which is awesome. Um, I also have an MBA. I love budgeting and numbers. Uh, so I'm very happy to be with all of you uh, this term. Thank you, Amanda. 
Next is Mary Haken. Uh, hi, everyone. Representative Mary Haken Phillips here. I also have a difficult last name. Um, the first last name is Haken, like a computer hack. That's helpful. Uh, I am our first um, incoming, you know, first year freshman legislator, and I am excited to be joining your Ways and Means Committee. I'm a native Michigander. I have a BA and an MA in political science, as well as a JD. I am a practicing real estate and business law attorney in Concord. Um, before my legal career, I have a background as an executive assistant in both finance and banking. Um, I currently serve on the Hanover Finance Committee, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you, Mary. And uh, last is James Murphy. Uh, good morning, all. My name is Jim Murphy. I'm up here in Hanover. Uh, with uh, Mary, I also am a um, uh, freshman rep in the House serving uh, Hanover and Lyme. Um, I'm a native Granite Stater. I've lived uh, in Hanover for over 40 years and have lived in the state of New Hampshire for well over 50 years. Some of you may remember when it was New England Telephone. That's my dad. That was my dad's company when he got out of the Navy. And every time he got a promotion, we got to move. So I've lived in Manchester twice, Concord once, Portsmouth or Hampton once, and then Berlin for about three years. Um, I then uh, left uh, the Grand Estate to um, go to college in Central Mass. Uh, I got my uh, medical degree in DC, and then I've practiced orthopedic surgery for the past 40 years, having retired about a year ago. I worked uh, both at uh, Dartmouth-Hitchcock for about 30 years and at New London Hospital as a chief medical officer for an additional nine or 10 years. Uh, I retired a year ago. This is my freshman year in the house and I'm looking forward to working with everybody in ways and means um, and uh, enjoy, we'll hopefully enjoy the time when we can get together in person and meet and uh, do the work of the state. So thank you. Well, thank you, James. Isn't this great? Look at the diverse amount of talent that we have here, man. It's spread all over. And I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Now, about myself, I've been uh, a New Hampshire born and raised person. I lived in New Hampshire all my life, except for the time I spent in the military. I have a Master of Science a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. I worked for the Bell System. Spent about 12 years with, as a designer for Bell Laboratories, 12 years as a, as a manufacturing engineer for Western Electric, and 12 years as an engineering manager for AT&T, and I retired. And I get my, Lucent, my pension from Lucent, which has been bought out by another company, and it's been bought out by another company. So I still consider myself a Bell System person. I spent about 50 years in addition to that, either as a selectman, budget committee, board of adjustments, or moderating staff, or as a uh, elected state rep. And I've enjoyed them all. And like as Susan told you, we both came in at the same time, 13 tons ago. And I spent most of my time in ways and means. And Susan and I, we rotate all the time. Whenever the Democrats are in the majority, she chairs and Republicans are in the majority, I chair. But we work with each other. You know, we have different political beliefs and we, we stay with those beliefs but we can still work with each other. And we always try to find common ground because to be an effective legislator, you have to know how to co communicate, negotiate and compromise. Can't do that, you really shouldn't be here, but there's so many that are in the legislature that has not learned that. So I hope we all continue this because 
we were, were the only committee that met remotely at UNH that got a vote that was like, what, 315 to five when we met at UNH on our revenue estimates. Everything else was complete chaos, battle, everything. I mean, it was strictly political down the line. But as it's been said, as Edith has said, we deal in facts and we try to stay with those facts. And, we, and throughout the committee, when we do the revenue estimates, I will make sure that each and every one of you participate. Because if you don't participate, you don't learn anything. If you just sit there and listen. So you'll see me. Okay, Mary, what do you think? Where is this one to go? And there is no such thing as a, I know I'm rambling on, there's no such thing as a dumb question. If there's a question, bring it out because somebody else probably wanted to say it too, but thank God you said it. All right, I think we need to get into the program now. We were given an organization uh, sheet with the committee purpose and all that. And I'll just quickly run down this. The committee purpose is to examine and consider the state of the treasury. Also to consider re and report on all bills and resolutions relating to money by state taxes, fees, or other methods of raising state funds and other matters referred to it. And report to the House in the form of House resolution and estimates of state revenues. So we have two major jobs where other committees normally just contend with bills. We have to contend with the bills that are before us as well as revenue estimates. The other day, as I looked and we had 10 bills. I looked this morning, now we have 21 bills. And look later on this week, it will probably be more than that. And we have to determine on these bills, which are the early bills and which are the late bills. And those early bills, we don't have much time to get them out. The early bills, I believe, have to be out on the, like the 18th of February. Um, and I'll go through that in, in a minute. But the first thing we need to do is to do the revenue estimates. But none of us can do the revenue estimates, not even the people that have been in the committee a long time, until we re-educate ourselves. So as you know, in the calendar, we have a hybrid arrangement scheduled for next week. It's called an economic update. On that economic update, the first day on the 19th, we'll be bringing in seven different type of economists or, or experts relative to the process. And the next day will be six or seven more presenters. And these presenters will all be presenting virtually and we're scheduled to meet in the reps hall, but we may change that because of the, what's going on right now. We may end up going completely virtual. Um, and I'll get into more of the schedule later. <clears throat> but after we spend next week with the economists, and I, the following week we'll spend a number of days with agency heads. The agency heads that are responsible for the different revenues we have. New Hampshire is unique. Is we're in a state that doesn't have, we're the only state that doesn't have a broad based tax. We don't have a broad based income tax or broad based sales tax. We pay for our budget, what I call a portfolio of taxes and fees business taxes, liquor, you know, and a whole variety of other things. And these taxes and fees. Are all controlled uh, 
the administration of them is controlled by various agencies. We're bringing these agency heads and they'll tell us what is the status of say the rooms and meals tax. What's the status of the liquor? What's the status of tobacco tax? Uh, and we'll spend a, a few days, full days, doing that. So it'll take us all that amount of time to get ready to generate our revenue estimates. So that's the education process part of it. So I talked to the chairman of the finance committee, Ken Weiler. They're going to be getting the governor's budget on the 15th of February. So we need to have our revenues to the house around that same time. We talked 15th of February from now. There's not much time to do that. And then also, the I think it's the following week, we need to get the second the bills that go into the second committee out. So we're going to have to be dealing with second committee bills while we're doing the revenue estimates. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us, <coughs> but we'll do it. Any, uh, so those are our two main areas. Now, the rules of the committee. We have a committee meeting, and it says 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. That means 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. It's not two or three minutes later. First thing is, it's impolite to, to waste somebody's time that's there early because you decide for some, maybe it was written, but don't come late. If you're going to be late, you give me a call. If you're not going to show up, you give me a call. So we know that. We can get started with that, with that knowledge. Now, normally when we have public hearings, there's no food or drink during the public hearing. We're operating under emergency orders, so it's extremely difficult to have public hearings the way we had before. They're going to be Zoom type or hybrid type public hearings. So we're gonna have, uh, have to work our way through this process. It's a new process for all of us. Last year, <clears throat> we were hit with this process. The, the last day we had regular legislative meetings was the 12th of March. Since then, the legislative office building has been closed. I went to the legislative office building yesterday, the first time since March 12th. And, my office was moved and I had to make sure the stuff was all ready to, to move. We're still not going to be able to get back into our regular offices. What they're doing is they're going to have double rooms so that we can maintain a six foot distance. We still have the face mask. And yesterday they just came in we delivered the air purifiers. They're going to have these gigantic air purifiers for each of these double rooms. They can only make four double rooms per floor. So four double rooms per floor, you're talking about eight committees can be meeting at once. So rather than meeting normally Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, some committees are going to have to be, meet Monday, Thursday, Monday, etc. So Monday till Friday, we got to be prepared. We don't know what those dates are yet. Those things haven't been worked out yet. So. The bills that, that this came in, the 21 bills, I'm not sure how many of those are going to be early bills and how many are going to be regular bills. I, the second committee bills are due the 18th of, of February. I want to have the revenues out 
on the 16th of February. We don't have much time, so we have a lot to do. Next week is the 19th and 20th, where we're going to have the economic update. The following week, we're going to have the agency heads come in. And the following two weeks, we're going to have work sessions where we debate, get our questions answered. I have a phone ring. Ignore it. Um, I'm only hoping that the early bills that we have is only just a few of them, and that the bulk of them could be come could come in later, and the rest of the bills uh, will be due the 25th of March, so that gives us a lot, a lot more time. The 25th of March is only 10 weeks away. So if we end up with 40 bills, and every bill has to have a public hearing, and usually after the public hearing, there's a lot of questions. If there's a lot of questions, then we'll put, then we need to sign subcommittees. And usually we run uh, maybe about four subcommittees, and then the subcommittee chair, I'll be signing subcommittee chairs, and I try to balance it out. And then there'll be, uh, try to have proponents and opponents on the subcommittee so that uh, both sides of the issue can be debated. And then after the subcommittee meets, they can also bring in people to ask questions. They can act like a regular committee, and then they, they also have to have their hearings noticed. There's a 24-hour notice versus a regular full committee needs to be noticed a week ahead of time. And when the subcommittee finishes their work, we get together as a full committee again, and then we exec. And hopefully everybody can take part in that exactly. So you know that you're not going to be there. You've got to let the minority leader, which would be Susan or myself as a majority leader for the uh, Republicans, you know, so that we can get a replacement. So we have a full complement of Republicans and Democrats to be able to vote on this executive committee. Now you can read through the sheets that I sent you to uh, Karen or Jen, all the things that we expect from committee members. Uh, one of the things is if you're a sponsor or a co-sponsor of a bill, it comes before the committee. The sponsor cannot and the co-sponsor cannot ask questions of the person that's testifying. They have to sit back to the people that are there to observe the committees. And then they they can be they can testify themselves. Uh, I notice I put a lot of items there, but they're all important. When we do vote on a bill and exec session, there's two types of calendars that can go on. It can go on the regular calendar or it can go on the consent calendar. The consent calendar means that it's a bill that usually comes out of committee with a unanimous vote. If it's a Unanimous vote and it doesn't do with raising revenues and that, then you can vote it to go on the consent calendar. And all the consent calendars, when they go to the full house, will be voted on by one vote unless some of them have been taken off. 
Now, if one person in the committee objects to having it on consent and they want it to go on the regular calendar so it can be debated, then that's what it will be. It will not be on consent. But you'll learn these things as you, as you go through the process. The subcommittees, you'll all have an opportunity to sign up for what subcommittee that you want to be. I just want to make sure it's balanced, though. And if you're not assigned to a subcommittee and the subcommittee holds a hearing, you can still go to that and participate. Um, there is one other thing. Next week, it's scheduled to hold a meeting in Reps Hall of the Joint Senate and House members. And unless individual members want to participate remotely. If that happens, to get into Rep Hall, you can only do it two ways. One is to the State House from Park Street on the side entrance. We'll provide you the security people the names of the committee members so that when you go in, the name will be there and they'll check the temperature and, and that so you are going to come in. The other way is to go into the legislative office building and you'll be checked by the guard there and then you go through the tunnel over into the uh, state house. But let me kind of warn you right now. I got a call this morning that there's a possibility that uh, we may not be meeting in Reps Hall next week um, because of uh, the threat to the various capitals, state capitals in the United States. And we were just notified this morning that the Legislative Budget Office uh, will not be in the State House next week because of that threat. When I get off this meeting with you today, I will be contacting the speaker and finding out uh, what the situation is because they may completely close the, the state house down and we'll have to do this. We're not going to stop this meeting. We're going to have to do it completely virtual. As I hear now, there's a number of uh, our committee members from both the Senate and the House that will be uh, participating virtually. I think there's at least nine right now. I don't have a problem doing that because all the presenters were going to be presenting virtually anyway. And then the only, and all the outside members that were going to be listening in we're going to be doing it virtually. <clears throat> oh, I, I think under the conditions, be prepared that we'll be doing this virtually. And we'll let you know that. I think I talked a bit. Uh, Chris, do you have any questions? Between uh, Susan and myself, we may be able to answer them. Major, um, Representative Almy has her hand up and also Representative Go Marlow. Representative Almy. Thank you. On um, you have been talking about an organization sheet, which is what we hand out when we're there in person. Did that get sent to us? Because I didn't get one. Uh, that was sent to everybody as part of the invitation, right, uh, Jen? And, and Yes, that's right. But I, I could send it out again, Representative Almy. Thank you. Yeah, I did not notice that at all. I'm sorry. It's a three-page information sheet. And I assume if, if you got it, would you raise your hand? Okay, so mostly everybody received this. About half. <laughs> it's like... So, uh, go, go through that. Yes. That is it. And there's a lot there. And I, I could go through every every single line right now, but 
And basically, it's the roles of the operation of the committee yeah. under the new chair. Yeah. It's the same rules that we've been operating under for quite a while. Uh, one of the most important things is, especially for the new people, when somebody's up there testifying and you completely disagree with them, you don't disagree with them from, from the chair. We're there to get testimony. We're here, we're here to listen to those that are giving testimony that can ask questions, but we don't debate them. Nor, nor do we make our own comments. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't get people to come in to testify. You, you, you have the public hearing because you want to get that information. Yeah. Right. Any other questions? You know what I would suggest? is that next week when the LBA comes in, they're going to go through their package and introduce, especially the new ones, all the, all the kinds of documents that you're going to have to be concerned with in order to do, to do your job the revenues. The monthly focus, the, the monthly percentages of revenues, they'll, they'll go through the various uh, revenues, the taxes and fees. Right. And then after the LBA does their thing for about an hour, and the, and the hour isn't just strictly for them to talk, but for you to ask questions too. The documents will be given to you, so you'll have those. And then the Department of Revenue will be coming in to talk about an hour on there the revenues that they collect. The revenues they collect is, is probably about 60, around 65% of the total revenues. And that about right, Susan. It's, it's the majority of the revenues because it's the big ones, the uh, business taxes, the interest and dividend, the tobacco, uh, the meals and loans tax, those things. Other taxes such as securities, liquor, the lottery. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. there are six hands up now. The first one was Jenny Gamalo, and I don't know the order of the others. Oh, okay. My, I just have a request. Um, the literature that the uh, presenters at the economic update um, give us. Can we have that in color copy? Because those charts are generally color coded. And I, I remember two years ago, it was hard to read them afterwards without the good, color. That's a good point. Jen, could we make sure of that? Jen? I will see about it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, they don't all have to be, but maybe just the chart pages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Edith has her hand up. Yes, um, Mr. Chairman, I'm finding it a little difficult to recognize some of the words you're using. I, I wonder if you can arrange your screen so that you're looking more directly at the camera. In my computer, there's a little light that shows where the camera is and you so I adjust it so that I'm looking straight into the camera. And most of the people participating in this meeting are looking straight forward. And since we're all going to be spending a lot of time remotely, if you could uh, think about making your face directly looking at us. Is that better? Help. That's much better. And it's just a minor detail. Uh, at first I thought I was getting a little deaf, but it. I can turn up my sound on the computer. So apparently I've gotten used to looking at people's mouths. It helps me understand what they're saying. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Edith. Uh, next is uh, Jordan. Yeah, thank you, uh, Norm. 
I, I just wanted for the uh, freshmen to uh, remember that there's two different sets of rules that the we operate under. The House normally operates under Robert's rules for the committees, but the House itself <laughs> operates under the rules we passed last week out in the parking lot. So it's just, it's just a, a subtle difference as to how the committee operates and how we have a little more freedom to do some things that we can't do when we're sitting as a body and in, in, uh, as representatives in Reps Hall. Just, you know, FYI type stuff. Okay. Oh, yeah, one one other thing uh, regarding the, the color uh, photos. Um, you're absolutely correct getting them, but if uh, we get them uh, sent to us and you happen to have a color printer, you can uh, make your own. Makes it easy that way. Saves the state money. Now, if they would only pay us a per diem for sitting on our butts in our houses, that would be far better. -er. Okay. Um, Patrick and Romney. Romney. Pat. There I am. Um, Jordan, I hate to I hate to break the news to you. Uh, this is not why I had my hand raised, but uh, we went to a chair's meeting on Friday, and the clerk clarified the issue of Robert's rules versus Mason and committees. Here's what he had written down. We do not follow Robert's rules anywhere in the New Hampshire House. House rules govern committee procedures uh, 100 to 111. We're silent. Mason's to be consulted. So we have rules. That, that, that's a, uh, a change. When did he decide to do that? Because we've been doing that in our uh, in the committee for the last uh, 20 years. That, that's I've, I'm just, I'm just a messenger on this one, uh, but but we're supposed to follow Masons all the way through. No, we do majors rules and Alman's rules. Uh, Alan, uh, Norm, I wasn't done. Norm, you're all. Oh, okay. Was, all right, go ahead. Sorry. That wasn't. That wasn't my. Uh, I have a few other things to mention. Okay. You're, you're, uh, for, especially for the freshmen, uh, we're, you're going to realize that we work very closely with the Department of Revenue Administration and the Legislative Budget Assistance. So that's DRA and LBA. Those are the initials. Um, you're also going to find that we work closely with the Liquor Commission and the Lottery Commission, since we are the ones who deal with tobacco, gambling, and liquor issues. So you're going to get to see a lot of those folks as well. Uh, the, the pink card uh, was mentioned. There's still uh, for the former members and, and new members, but former members, they're still working on the process of how a pink card, if it's going to be virtual for the people testifying, how do they get their pink card in? And basically, they are still in the process of defining how that's going to work. But uh, basically, when the calendar comes out, I think it's going to be that they have to email a certain person who will put them on, uh, there won't be a, a physical pink card, but it'll be a list of people that want to testify from the public, okay? So that's that's still being worked out. And same thing with the blue sheet for people who want to sign in for new members, there's a sheet which, new, uh, which people who don't want to testify but want to support the bill, they just sign in before a committee hearing, uh, there'll be an electronic version of the blue sheet as well. Um, I just want to jump, jump in, Norm, just to make sure everybody understands what an early bill is, um, because it's important to, to a couple of committees like, like Ways and Means and Finance. We get a lot of what they're called second committee bills. So early bills are bills that go to a, a, a policy committee first, like uh, Commerce or, or, uh, or Municipal. And then they, they'll come to, if, it's a, if it has any uh, fee in there or any revenue that needs to be generated, it will come to us as a second committee. And that happens, like Norm said, after mid-February, we start. So when, if we get 30 or 40 bills uh, this year as primary bills, remember, we're also after, after February, we're going to have we'll probably be in possession of another five to 10 bills in which we have to uh, act on as and just on the piece that relates to fees and, and taxes. Uh, that's that's our job. Um, 
Well, one thing about Ways and Means, not, it's not true for every committee, uh, but we try to actually fix bills. And that's where the subcommittees come in. If we, and, and believe me, we do a lot of fixing of Senate bills too that come to us. Uh, and they actually look towards us to help fix them because we actually really spend time with these bills. But we do fix bills, but the committee generally, we take the, the temperature of the committee as to is this bill, even if we fix it, is this something we think that the committee thinks is worthy of being fixed? If yes, then normal call for a, a subcommittee to be formed to work, 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 to fix the bill. And, uh, and that usually requires amendments, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the one other little thing that I, I again, from, from the, um, the, the uh, chair's meeting, I don't make sure everybody understands this now. This is really important when we're physically in the in the committee. Is yes, a prime sponsor after if you're a prime sponsor in ways and means, you present your bill, you can't come back and sit down and you cannot ask questions. If if you're a co-sponsor of a ways and means bill, you're allowed to come and sit down back in your seat, but you cannot ask questions. So that's that's the way that works. And one other thought, I just wrote some notes down as Norm was talking. The LOB, when we get back to LOB, currently the main entrance of the legislative office building is being repaired. I just drove by there over the weekend. I went to the Autobahn, who did a little Autobahn hike in Concord and just, let me see how they're doing. It seems like there's still a lot of work in that main entrance to be done. So that main entrance. So if you ever try to enter the LOB, you have to go around the back up the parking garage and there's a, uh, there's a security guard there that will, will let you in. Uh, and because they're going to have two points of entry, one in the LOB, as Norm said, because the, the security is going to do a test, temperature test on you uh, and then let you in. Or you can go through that side entrance, which most people, some people, especially freshmen, don't know where the store is. If you face the, if you face the state house, if you look, go to your uh, right from the main entrance. And it's a basement entrance on the side entrance of uh, uh, there, and that, that that's uh, there's always a state trooper that um, there's a state trooper station there that uh, they'll 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 test you, etc. So those are my comments. Uh, just jotting down notes as Norm was talking. Thank you. Yeah, all these issues are highlighted on those three sheets that I provided you on the organization day. So I would go through each and every one of them. Um, Alan, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I just want to call to everyone's attention that we are graced by the presence of the Honorable Jerry Stringham. He's an esteemed alumni of the Ways and Means Committee, and he's watching us as we speak now. So I just wanted to acknowledge him, and I hope he's not a stranger to this committee. This session, uh, Representative Stringham often had some very insightful uh, and helpful comments regarding uh, bills we were looking at. And I just want to say, hi, Jerry, we already miss you. Yes. Well, thank you for those kind words. Um, Susan. Yeah, you have to unmute, Susan. I do. Uh, I've got two things here. One of them is from something that Representative Brahmi said on, I've been wondering, are they going to give us parking assignments before next week? Or do we just all go down to the, the garage on Store Street? I would think that you have those parking assignments uh, coming out okay. next. The other thing, though, was on when we're doing a hearing, quite very frequently, somebody comes to the hearing with the intention of listening and speaking if necessary. And if they have to sign up ahead of time, I guess a whole lot of people are going to have to sign up that might then want to waive it. Okay. Could very well be. The um, as Pat said, the 
process for the pink cards and the blue sheets have not been uh, generated yet because how do you do it? They haven't come up with a solution yet. So that's been worked on. Susan, and they will let in? us know. Norm, can I jump Thank in? You. Yeah, you're, you're right, Norm. I, I, the, we, we, at, the, at the chair's meeting, we asked a lot of questions. Uh, there were a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, th these are some of them. How's that all going to work? And the more you ask the questions, the more, you know, so they're working on it. We, the final rule isn't out yet as to how we're going to do this. But I would imagine that uh, that's why we, that's why we're going to have, the other thing is that Norm, you may want to spend one minute, one more minute again on requesting the uh, technical people for the committee that we're looking for two. You may want to explain that a little bit more why we need that. Uh, well, uh, the problem is right now you have, we have Jennifer for who's, who's uh, uh, monitoring the meeting. When we get to committees, uh, if you don't mind, Norm, if, if when we get to committees, it's very hard for the chair to uh, monitor what's going on with people from the outside, et cetera, et cetera. It's hard for the clerk to do that as well. So the solution is only, there's only four researchers. It's, it's impossible to spread them across all these meetings. So the solution is to have a couple of people on our committee, each of the committees, be volunteers to monitor when we're back to hybrid, when we're back to actually being in the double rooms, uh, but the public is calling in uh, that, uh, that we have a couple of our members who are one at a time though, willing to, for that, that day to monitor uh, what's going, uh, the, what's online. So uh, Norm, you wanna take it from there, but that, that's, that's the reason for that. That, that. that was the solution to not enough staff to cover uh, potentially eight, potentially eight uh, hearings going on at the same time. We just don't have enough researchers to cover that. And, and we'll be getting into that. Uh, Representative Ames? You have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry, I was slow with that. Um, yeah, just uh, a question that uh, it goes back to deadlines and uh, you mentioned, Norm, that uh, you know the first deadline we'll be bumping into is February 18th, and that's not far away. Um, plus, the budget uh, message from the governor will be coming over on the 16th, I think. Um, and uh, so that brought to mind the uh, fact that we now have in rule, as a result of the recent meeting and session of the House, a uh, allowance, a provision that allows the uh, 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 extension change of those of those time deadlines that are in the rules uh, by the speaker after consultation. And I wondered if there's been any discussion of that. We obviously are, um, this whole system that we're working with is not only new, but it's awkward and difficult. And, um, and while some things uh, probably you just can't change because of the budget, and it's sort of absolute deadline at the end of June. Um, uh, I, I wondered whether there's been any discussion of uh, what can be done to uh, make this all manageable. There has been some discussion and it's a uh, discussion in, pro in progress because we don't know what the answers are and we're not sure what the questions <clears throat> are gonna be coming. But you're right. My, I'm very concerned, and I laid it out in my uh, plan here. See, the governor's budget on the 15th normally looks like it may be the, the 16th. The 16th, we want to have our revenues. And the 18th is the second committee bills that have to be out of the committee at that point in time. Uh, it depends on how many second committee bills we have now, whether or not that's going to be a real issue for us. And I hope that very soon I'll know all the bills that we have and, and have a second committee. If it's just one or two second committee bills, we should be able to hold it. Because the, 
18th is five weeks away. The next week, you know, what we're going to be doing next week, you know, what we're going to be doing the week after this. And that, that takes care of two weeks. There's three weeks left. And then uh, we still need to have our work session on revenues. That's the most important thing we have right now. That's number one priority. Now, if I find that uh, we have too many second committee bills, then we're going to have to come to some agreement with the speaker and say, hey, we can't do this. He may say, well, okay, what we'll do is just retain these bills. And that could be one solution. But then if there are some, if there are extremely important bills, uh, we need to know what we have to deal with. We don't know that yet. But you're right. It's going to be a work in progress. It's going to be challenges all the way up, all the way along. Because we can't, if we could, if we have problems when we can meet as a committee as a whole, meeting the schedules that we have. Now, you multiply what the problems are when you can't meet as a whole to discuss these things and to interrogate witnesses and all that in person. It's, it's a whole different world we have to work on right now. So, we got to work through them. Thank you. And if anybody has any suggestions, please step right up to the plate. And as far as uh, this new world of being able to operate under Zoom and, and hybrid, if you have experience that you think you can help, let me know because we, we're going to need you to make the committee successful. There's 24 of us, and whoever's running a, a meeting can't handle everything all at once. It has to concentrate on the meeting itself. So we need the help. Oops. Oops. Okay, uh, Ms. Susan, your hand is still up. Um, yeah, well, I've been putting it up and taking it down as you did things, but um, I just wanted to volunteer. Uh, some of us that have been through this quite a lot and so we don't have to listen quite as attentively to the testimony as others maybe could help by just watching the, the uh, hand raising or, or something. Yes. Not Especially a, when we're talking as a committee. Right, and, and, and not only the hand raising from the participants, but we need to be able to monitor the, the public and, and that may take two two people, one for monitoring the participants and one for monitoring the public. So we need to treat them as well as we treat ourselves. I'm not sure, do, does the public have on um, a hand raising facility? I don't see it. I'm not sure. This I'm looking is, at the attendees list. They do have that. It's just that no one in the attendees list would be raising their hand right now. <laughs> ah, right. How do, how they do, will. How okay. Do, Jen, how do they get questions to us or comments? Um, if you were soliciting comments say during a work session, um, you could ask anyone who you could you could call on someone specifically that you could see in the attendee list. Or you could ask an attendee to raise their hand. Yeah, and, and I, I think it all boils down to how do we replicate the blue sheet. Yeah. And I think those instructions um, becoming representative major from um, from leadership. Right, and that that has come yet. Yes. In the same way as how do we replicate the pink parts. That hasn't been solved yet either. 
Representative mm -hmm. Major, if I could, I can't remember if you in, explained who Gen 4 is. Yes, she did. Uh, she did? Okay. A researcher, not just a staffer who's very good at tech. Well, Jen is a committee researcher, and she's one of the best there is at, at the LLB. And then our committee assistant is Karen Kowalski. And uh, she's Kowalski. Kowalski. Thank you. She's, she's good. Uh, but both the committee researcher and the committee assistants not only serve our committee, our committee, but a number of other committees. I think, Jen, how many committees do you serve? Um, I have three permanent committees, Ways and Means, Education, and Judiciary. Um, our beloved Joel Anderson retired at the end of the year after, I believe, 33 years of service. Um, and so I'm, I'm currently also filling in for fishing game and science and tech. Yeah. Wow. And, and Karen is just almost the same. Yeah, she has. Joel, Joel Anderson uh, was a committee assistant when I was on the science and technology back in 1997. He's retired now. Uh, um, now, Representative Gamal? Yes. Um, first, I'd like to offer my services to help in any way. I'm relatively tech savvy. Great. And second, I wondered if the freshmen know how to access the bills um, through the general court website so you can start looking at them. And if not, maybe we could tell them now or Jen could send them a, a little outline of how to get there. All right, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I assume that they have been attending the freshman uh, workshops. Uh, is there any freshman here that doesn't know how to access the goals? No, yeah, you go to the committee. This would help. I'm sorry, Gene. Oh. Yep, I was just going to say you go to the the committees and the ways and means, and then it says bills. Uh, it's just there. Sorry. Bills Anyways. and committee. Yeah. So if you go through the committee, our our ways and means committee, you'll you'll find a way to see all the bills and then you just click on the number and it will pop up and you can print it or read it. Representative Pardon? Gamal, would uh -huh. you mind if any of the freshman committee members ha have a problem doing this, if they contact you and you walk them through this? That'd be fine. Yeah, sure, I don't mind. That would be super. Because if you get a head start on them, when we finally get rolling, you'll it's a it's helpful. <laughs> right, because that and that's from experience. <laughs> you you want to go through and read every bill as soon as you can and start making notes on it, so that you're not reading the bill when the public hearing comes up. You want to read the bill ahead of time, make notes, so you know what your questions are going to be, and you. And you may want to ask some questions before we even have the public hearing so you understand better what's going on. And then as a result, the committee is a better committee because of it. Uh, uh, Bonnie. Yeah, hi, Norm. Um, back to that uh, question about uh, Who's going to enable the or uh, people who want to testify to speak and on, on Zoom? Uh, my understanding is that once they sign up in the, as a uh, that they want to speak before the night before, the day before the hearing. Uh, once it once it's published in the calendar, the calendar, they, they can start 
saying they want to speak to the bill that somehow magically i don't know if it's going to be centralized or decentralized but then they they will be able they will be enabled to uh, enter the meeting in a way that they can be recognized this is all we know so far no, but we don't it's know a big, the it's a big unknown yeah. as to the detail of that right now. thank you uh, any more questions Not seeing any more questions, and uh, I will notify you about next week whether it's going to be a completely Zoom meeting or it's going to, it's going to be meeting in the reps hall. I'll also get the schedule out once I get the okay from the speaker's office, what days we can have the following week to meet with all the agency heads associated with all the revenue streams. So we can get that under our belt and then work towards the following the next week to start doing the work sessions on the revenues. I just as soon as we have all the bills, then I'll know what the early bills are and see whether or not we can handle those as well as the revenue estimates within the time frame that's been allotted to us. And then see what, what our next step would be. So, Susan, do you have anything else? Matt? No, I'm good. Nick? Uh, Nikki and John Janigan. Is it Janigan or Jean Janigan? Janigan. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll get it eventually, John. Go ahead. It's okay. No, it's no problem. Um, so um, basically, I just had a question on scheduling. I know that you said that because of the constraints with Zoom and so forth and, and meeting rooms, um, meetings could be scheduled anywhere from Monday to Friday. Um, would the goal, I mean, and I know typically when I have other things to schedule, I usually try to schedule them on Mondays or a Friday to avoid conflicts. Would the goal be to try to schedule things between Tuesday and Thursday, and then Monday and Friday would be backup? That's the way I feel about it. So. Try to get all of our committee work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday so that we can do our other stuff on Mondays and Fridays, such as. Okay. Thank you. Sort of stuff. And I'll, I'll try to do that. And just as soon as I find out what they're going to allot to us, I'll let you, everybody be, uh, be aware of it. All right. And, okay, there's one more. Uh, Walter uh, Spellsbury. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I suppose this asks for a broad generalization, but more or less, what might we be expecting to receive in hard copy as this process follows? <clears throat> and what uh, should we anticipate in terms of running the printing press at home? Good question, excellent question. Jen. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think we have an answer for this yet. It's another one of those things that, um, that we're waiting for a final word, but I'll certainly keep it in mind. And if I learn something, I can I can pass that along. Yeah, what we're trying to do is, is get from the presenters early enough a, a copy so that we can copy it and send it out to you. But obviously, if they send it to us on Friday. That that won't that will not happen. I can assure you that for the presentations next week, that's not going to be an option to 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 send it through the mail because they um, they most likely won't get their materials to me by until Thursday, and then Monday is a holiday. Right. So all of the materials for next week's um, program will be posted online. And if there's any problem accessing them that way, I can I can email them to you as well. But I, I can tell you for sure for next week's programs, that's not going to be something that we'll be able to do. 
to mail them. Yeah, we're still getting Christmas cards mailed yeah. the 14th of December. I got one yesterday, the 14th of December. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sure the Zoom environment is changing things and none of us knows exactly what to expect, but um, are bills generally printed and distributed or is that also something that we just read online or print off on our own? Um, if you have access to get into the state house, you can go up to the sergeant of arms or the clerk's office and get copies of the bills, but they're not normally distributed. Uh, and normally, if, when you do your business at the state house, uh, the, your committee assistants will have all the bills for your committee in your slot. So they're there. Now, where we don't go to this LLB or the state house, then if we want to know about the bills, we're going to have to print them ourselves or take a trip up to the state house and get a copy from the clerk's office. So I've been doing a lot of printing. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing my printer out. And, and on ways and means, you have to work with printed copies. You, 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 I go through almost a thousand pages a month. I'm not kidding you. I, I, because this was at the beginning of a session, you've got to print all that stuff. Most of the presentations that are coming out for next week, I'll probably end up printing most of it. Because as Jen says, they're not gonna send it to us so that we have it. So she has it Monday and you can send it out. Even if you do send it out, we may not get it. So, so and it, I would advise getting it printed because if you have a printed copy, you're a lot better off. You can make notes on the printed copy as the presenters talking about it. So I'll always err on the side of printing it. I know it's expensive. But I wish there's a better answer than that. But Susan? Yeah, you're muted, Susan. Sorry. Uh, first, uh, we have one person on our committee who uh, has no computer. That's uh, Representative Griffin. And I hope that someone's going to get her the materials for next week somehow printed. Um, and second, um, is it going to be at all possible maybe for the clerk's office to create bundles of bills by committee and uh, enough for each committee and have those of us that can drive into Concord to pick them up? You know what? Because they aren't gonna want us in the building all the time going in to try to go to the clerk's office and they're not going to want that. <laughs> Um, let me talk to the clerk about about that, and we'll send an email to them, to all the committee members what that process will be. So, Representative have, Griffin, uh, uh, Representative Abrami. Yeah, on the same topic, I, I think it's only fair that. We, you and I should really uh, talk to the speaker about this one. You know, that we're gonna be saving a lot of mileage money. So I, I, I don't think it should be a burden on, the, on our, our legislative budget to have all of the bills mailed to us ahead of time. I, I think that's only fair. I mean, um, I've been, I've, the last year I've been spending a lot of money on my own paper and my own ink, and <laughs> ink's not cheap. Uh, and I, I, think it's, I think it's unreasonable for them to ask our members to print all the stuff that comes to us. The other concern I got is, uh, as we've been talking here is, as those of us have been around, we know that everybody who testifies comes in with some handouts or multiple handouts. 
Uh, and the question becomes, how are we going to get all those handouts? Uh, and those handouts are very helpful. Uh, they have charts and things that you can relate to that they point to as they're testifying. And I think it's unreasonable to ask, uh, again, for us to, to for all the committee members to, to print these out at home. Uh, uh, we all have different quality printers and all of that. So this is a big issue, I think. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's a fiscal issue because we're saving all the money on mileage. I think it's a matter of just, it's a timing issue of how quickly things can get to us in the mail. Uh, the bills certainly should begin, we should get the bills in, in the mail uh, well ahead of time uh, so we don't have to print those. Uh, and you should have paper copies because we, we all write on those things, uh, everybody that I know. We write our notes on the bills. Uh, and, and keep track, especially then when we go to executive session, we remind ourselves of what was said and, and what's there. So, but anyway, uh, I think that's something that's that's fair that we should try to work on. Um, and uh, and we'll think, uh, you, you and I know I could talk offline on this, but thank you. Representative Salsa. <coughs> Tom. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say, I know already bills are moving forward. All of these comments make me think the more we could put off until next year, the better when we get more back to a normal uh, committee setup. Because uh, it just seems like to prioritize the most important bills, the most important handouts, you know, and so on. It's going to be very important. I'm with you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Representative Helmer. Thank you. Um, I just want to speak up for the people in the 037 zip code, uh, which I think is four of us, including the gentleman from Charleston. I think it's 037. Uh, anything that comes from Concord in normal times takes three to four working days to arrive. Um, so um, I don't know if you could speak to the clerk or maybe I should speak to the clerk if this happens. On that on somebody from his uh, from the staff who's driving up past New London can dump things in a post office in that direction so that we don't have to wait probably at this point two weeks for things to show up if it's going to go by mail. Or maybe we just end up spending a lot of money on print. Thanks. You know, I think people are going to have to come up with some workarounds. I know I have uh, my HP Instant Ink with uh, Hewlett Packard, and it started at fifteen dollars a month, then then nineteen ninety nine a month, now twenty five forty twenty four twenty four ninety nine a month. That gives me seven hundred pages. And then every 150 more, it's pages is so much. That's costing me a bundle. Oh, um, we've really done. Status? I think we're, uh, have we finished our meeting really? Okay. I, th I think we probably have. Everybody satisfied? Then we will let you know about the status of next week's two days of economic updates and how we're going to handle those. I'll, I'll find out how we can get these bills to you and anything else we'll communicate to you. Uh, there's one, one final thing. We're operating on a legislative uh, license right now. And there's only so many legislative licenses that can be handled at, at once. Does anybody have a problem? Uh, I have my own license for, for Zoom. So if I can't have a, a legislative license time slot, does anybody have a problem if we need to have a special meeting if I use it on? License. Mr. Chairman, I don't know what the current speaker uh, wants to do about this, but we were 
forbidden from meeting on private Zooms for a public meeting last term, which as you know, caused all kinds of workarounds. We did a lot of meeting in separate caucuses and then got together and exchanged information and then finally could hold a public meeting to bring out what we'd all been working on. So we're going to have to figure out a workaround. Okay. Um, nobody else has anything else to contribute. And uh, I thank everybody for joining the meeting today. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.